Welcome to a new episode of Major Conics Metal Detecting. The last few weeks we spent some time on different camps. Not all were hotspots, but at least it was a lot of fun. The first spot we went to was a large US hospital slash camp and we also know they had German prisoners of war there. We tried to get our friends from Aftervardigas with us, but alas, they had a barbecue, which is also very important. So I met up with my mate M.E. to detect a few hours in the evening. We were only half an hour in and I got my first BANGER of the day. Hello Kidokies! <laughs> we're back at the field room together with M.E. The boys from Afterwardigas couldn't come so uh, yeah, shame, sorry dude. But uh, next time, definitely. And uh, woo! Woohoo! Woohoo! We're on a US uh, field hospital, something like that. Find enough stuff here, find enough stuff. But look at this, guys. Jeepers! <laughs> that is definitely a US World War II Lieutenant Bar. And I forgot if it's first or second, I don't know anymore. But the pin is still there, but it's really broken. Ah, oh, do you see? Yeah, it falls off here a little bit. I have to secure that. Yeah, pin is still there. There's a lot of mud on it. Wow, look at this. Ooh, it's in bad condition. The back side. Oh, sorry. Wow, that's an amazing find. It's actually my first. I had a lot of them, but I got them from somebody else, from Mr. Wadiger. But I don't, didn't find one myself, and now I do. Wow, what a beauty. I'm very, very happy. Woohoo! It is indeed a sterling silver US World War II first lieutenant bar. I can't honestly say if this was the pin for the uniform or on the cap, but it's silver, it's wartime and it is awesome. Some sweeps later with the detector I came across this US World War II belt buckle. It was used on the web belt for enlisted soldiers and it is called the open version. Amazing find as well. After this beauty it stayed quiet for quite some time. Until I had the smallest of high pitch signals and out came a real surprise for all of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just had a find there. Took it out, it was very small and I showed it to my mate. And he has it here in his hands. And that definitely looks like a pin. And uh, I thought, yeah, let's clean it together. I will ask my mate to clean it on the movie. Looks like animal, red in the corner. Could be a distinctive unit citation again, of some sort. Uh, it cleans very bad. He doesn't want to uh, pressure it too much, but that's a badge for sure. And you should clean it at home. Yeah, I definitely will. But at least you can see that's a gorgeous, gorgeous batch again. Woohoo! Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. I cleaned it a little bit off camera. Of course, of course, of course. Do you recognize that? <laughs> that is a swastika, good guys. My lord. That I did not expect. As you can see, it's uh, some kind of shield. Should be a stick pin. Can't find it yet. I tried for a few minutes, but I don't want to waste too much uh, daylight. But that's the swastika shield, three white fields and one red with, I think there's stars or maybe some letters. Oh, why does it not focus? Wow, look at that guys. What a luck today. This pin is actually from the Reichskolonialbund or in English, the Reich Colonial League. It was a collective body that absorbed all German colonial organizations during the time of the Third Reich. It was led by this guy, Franz Ritter von Epp, a German general and politician. The organization's alleged purpose was to keep the population informed about the loss of German imperial colonies, to maintain contact with the former colonial territories and to create conditions in opinion favorable to a new German African Empire. After that gorgeous find, it was again time for two beautiful buckles. Once again a US soldier's belt buckle and after that an iron parachute 
buckle. Cool finds, but it didn't prepare me for the next find. That is for sure. Jim, man. I think Mr. Emmy wants me to go home. <laughs> He's crying a little bit. I found the next pin and it's in terrible condition. That's true. But that's a US warrant officer pin nonetheless. Look at this. You can still see the pin on the back. It's in terrible shape, but that doesn't matter. US warrant officer pin. Woohoo! That is cool. That is very, very cool. This warrant officer pin is absolutely amazing. It is indeed in terrible shape, but that just adds to the history. On this evening we had only one more find. A fantastic US overcoat button. I can't stop loving these. What a beautiful piece of history. The next week we met up with After Wardigger's Wardigger ME and another guy collecting junk. We were looking for US relics in that area, but instead we stumbled upon a Dutch campment. Starting off with this gorgeous find by After Wardigger's. Right guys, today we are together with Mr. ME, Mr. Wardigger's, Mr. War Mr. After Wardigger's. Mr. Wardegger and another guy <laughs> collecting junk. Uh, that's li literally his name <laughs> on Instagram. So uh, six of us are together today and the first find is in. And this is ridiculous, dude. Look at this beauty, man. That is a Dutch National Socialist Bewegung NSB badge. So it's the Nazi uh, party in the Dutch, in the Netherlands. And that's very cool. It's from a, uh, a Landstag, which means like a, um, a Parteitag or a day where they came together in the Netherlands, 1935 in Amsterdam. That is such a cool beauty, man. Come on, get in. I'm sorry, Mr. Deep Digger Dam, but I had to use it. What a find. What a superb find. I am in love. What a history. But regretfully for us, the weather turned for the worse. Heavy rain pounded us down a bit. We did find a few cool relics, especially off the war diggers, so be sure to check out their channel. But I got this gorgeous brooch from the campsite. Some bottles, an old Dutch crossed cannons button around 1900s and this tax plate for Dutch bicycles from 1933 till 1934. It is in the worst of conditions, but it is my first and I absolutely love it. No shame there. On our way back to the car, through the rain, I found this stunning amulet between the British 303 shell casings. It looks beautifully made, but I have absolutely no idea from what time frame or what country it is, although I suspect it's British or French. If you know, leave me a comment. So that was it for this video, we had a great time detecting together and we succeeded in our mission to save some history yet again. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show and you can always leave a comment. Bye bye.